Hi everybody, I am That Nursing Prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking all about esophageal varices. So let's get into it. So first of all, let's define the word varices. What are they? They are enlarged veins. So maybe you can think about having like varicose veins, right? People have varicose veins on their lower extremities. They have large veins. So that can happen to any vein in your body. So esophageal varices are simply enlarged veins in the esophagus. How do these happen? When the normal blood flow to the liver is blocked by something, it could be scar tissue, it could be a blood clot, something like that is blocking the normal blood flow. So the blood is like, well, what do we do? We gotta go somewhere. So it starts going through the smaller vessel. So the smaller blood vessels, it's taking a detour, which doesn't sound like a big deal, right? But these smaller vessels are not made to have that much blood in them. They are not made to accommodate this large amount of blood flow. And what happens is these vessels can start leaking and they can even rupture, which can be life-threatening. So esophageal varices are very important to know. Some risk factors when it comes to having these. The big issue with these is the bleeding. So you can have esophageal varices and have it under control, but once you start having a bleeding episode, that's when we're concerned. So these risk factors have to do with the bleeding. So the higher the portal vein pressure, so the portal vein of the liver, the higher the pressure in that vein, the more likely you are to have a bleed. Of course, cirrhosis, this is the big one. This is the number one thing that is associated with having these, is having cirrhosis, so scarring of the liver. Continued alcohol use. So if you've developed liver failure or cirrhosis as a result of alcoholism, chronic alcoholism, and you continue to drink, you don't stop, you have a higher risk of having an esophageal varicy and having it rupture, having a bleed. Of course, having a history. This has happened to you before. People who've had bleeding issues before are more likely to have bleeding issues again. Red marks on the varices. So if they were to do an endoscopy, if they were to put a camera down your throat and look at everything, they'll notice red marks on the varices. That is a risk factor for bleeding. And then finally, the bigger they are, the more likely they are to bleed. So larger varices. So the big causes are also related to the big risk factors. So high portal hypertension, as with the case with cirrhosis, having a blood clot. So maybe this blood flow issue is not a scar tissue issue like with cirrhosis. Maybe there's a blood clot in the portal vein. So a thrombus can cause this. And then much more rarely, but another potential cause is a parasitic infection can cause this. When it comes to signs and symptoms, you are usually asymptomatic until you have a bleeding episode. So some big signs and symptoms, vomiting blood, especially large amounts of blood. Black tarry stools, so there's blood in your stool. Feeling lightheaded, um, having a decreased level of consciousness or being in shock. All of these are related to the blood loss or the rupture of the varicine. So signs of shock include pallor, so pale skin, irregular breathing, irregular heart rate, things like that. So this is an emergency, right? When this ruptures, it's an emergency. It can be life-threatening. So we want to make sure we're keeping an eye on it. And then how is this diagnosed? Well, typically when somebody gets diagnosed with cirrhosis, they will also work you up to check to see if you have an esophageal varicy. So that's usually when it's done. And some things they do, they're going to do an endoscopy. So they're going to um, do conscious sedation and put that um, camera down your throat and check and see how things are going, see if they look enlarged, see if they have those red marks on the varices, things like that. They might also do a CT scan of the abdomen or a Doppler ultrasound to check the blood flow through the portal vein of the liver. And then sometimes instead of doing an endoscopy, they will do a capsule endoscopy, which is the same kind of concept, except for this one, the camera is in like a little pill and then you swallow that and they use that to visualize what's going on. 
So these are how we diagnose it, and it is usually associated with cirrhosis. So when you have been diagnosed with cirrhosis, they will also do this additional testing to see if you have an esophageal varicine. Now let's talk about treatment. So to prevent bleeding before a bleeding episode occurs, they might prescribe you beta blockers. Beta blockers will help reduce your blood pressure and therefore reduce the pressure in the portal vein. If that's not the case, right, if you're having a bleeding episode, we're going to have some other treatments. So some common things they might prescribe are band ligation, so where they take little elastic bands and tie it off to prevent bleeding or to stop the bleeding. They might give you vasopressin, which helps reduce blood flow to the portal vein to help reduce pressure in that area. The TIPS procedure. Now, when you think about cirrhosis, you think about portal hypertension, you think about esophageal varices, and then you think about the TIPS procedure. But the TIPS procedure is used last resort. It's not something we want to have to do. We want to do these other things first. So what happens in this procedure is they create a shunt. And that shunt decreases the pressure in the portal vein because the blood flows elsewhere. The big issue with this is we're not going through the liver. The liver isn't able to do its job and filter out things like toxins. So confusion can occur if toxins enter the bloodstream. It is considered the last resort treatment after everything else has already failed. And typically, they might do this for like temporary because they know that person they're operating on is going to have a liver transplant soon. So that's a common reason why they might do it. But again, it is the last resort. Of course, because they're losing lots of blood, they're going to need to get that blood volume back. So a blood transfusion. They're at high risk for infection because of the blood loss. So they're going to be put on antibiotics. Another procedure they might choose to do is a balloon tamponade. This is temporary, so I usually only do it for like 24 hours for like a day or so. And what this is, is they inflate the balloon to kind of stop the bleeding. But the big risk for this is once you deflate the balloon, right, once you take it out, they're at higher risk for bleeding again. So don't love to do it, but it is another option. And then finally, the last resort, if they are able, a liver transplant because this balloon tamponade and this tips, this can actually put you into liver failure if they weren't in it already. So the last resort treatment would be a liver transplant for these patients. So that was my video on esophageal varices. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.